Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for everything that you are to us, Lord. We just thank you for your spirit that is over us tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, for how you give us, you just energize us, how you fill us, how you breathe us with new life. We thank you, God, for being our healer, for forgiving us, Lord, giving us eternal life. There's so many things to thank you for. We just bless your name for all that you are. And Lord, we just ask tonight, God, that your spirit would just come on all of us, Lord, and that you would make us new. That, Father, you would show us the things that are old in our life that need to be discarded. And, Lord, you would just fill us up. And we just thank you, Lord, that you are going to do that for us tonight and that you are going to continue to fill us with your spirit. And we send that forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, hey, Freedom House. So everybody had a good day today, I bet. What a beautiful day that we had. Spring is so much fun because it's, everything is new, right? Um, I love that, all the new flowers, uh, being able to have the extra daylight. Isn't that fun? I mean, that we have more time to be able to go out on walks in the evening. And a couple weeks ago, Jim was, was changing all of our clocks for daylight savings time. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, the next morning he got up and he was just like, wow, I am just really tired. This time change is just really affecting me. And uh, he just kept trying to wake up and he was just kind of dozing off in his chair. And then he happened to look up and he noticed that it said 5 a.m. instead of 6 a.m., and what he had done was he had set the alarm clock two hours ahead instead of one hour ahead. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, and he, was, he had already had his cup of coffee. He had gone halfway through a cup of coffee so he couldn't go back to sleep. And he was, he was saying, that alarm clock has to go. <laughs> now, you're thinking, well... Yeah, it's the user, right? But it was actually the alarm clock. <laughs> We've had problems with this alarm clock in the past. It's just, um, it kind of messes up when you're trying to set, set it and, and excuses, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, anyway, it actually was the alarm clock. <laughs> and so he was like, that alarm clock is going in the trash. And so he uh, threw it in the trash. And, you know, Amazon came, got the box, got a brand new alarm clock. You know, we are creatures of habit. Uh, and we keep doing the same old things over and over even when something new would make our life easier, we just kind of keep holding on to things. So what old behavior in your life needs to be discarded? Have you been living with an old behavior in your life just because you've gotten used to it? Well, today we're going to see what Jesus has to say about discarding our old life and living a new life. Uh, we've been reading in the book of Matthew, and if you want to get to know who Jesus is, read one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, because it just shows us the heart of who Jesus is and his passion that he has for us. We're going to be reading tonight in Matthew 9, and in chapter 9, what we see is Jesus has been really busy. He's been out, he's been out healing people. And uh, he's uh, been celebrating. He's been out at dinners uh, with sinners. And he's been taking a lot of heat from it. Uh, the Pharisees have been saying, we don't understand. Why are you always eating and drinking with the sinners? And uh, he's telling them, you know what? It's not the healthy that need a doctor. It's the sick who need a doctor. And then he even takes a little heat from John the Baptist's disciples because they're, they're looking at Jesus and saying, you know, why aren't you fasting like we are fasting? 
And Jesus tells them in, in chapter 9, well, you know, why would the bridegroom's friends be mourning uh, at his wedding? Wouldn't they be celebrating? And there's going to come a time when my disciples are going to fast and mourn, but that time is not now, and that we are celebrating. You know, I kind of think about it as like when we have a gift that we have planned for someone, and we've planned this gift, and we are so excited to give it to them. Or maybe as a family, you've planned a special outing for your kids, and you can't wait to give them this gift. Now think about Jesus. I mean, he can, I bet he can just hardly um, stand it. He wants to give this gift so much because he knows that the gift that he is going to give of his life is going to completely change our lives, that it is going to fill us up and it is going to make us new. So Jesus, um, he replies to John the Baptist's disciples with these words in Matthew 9, 16 through 17. And he's talking about the, the mourning and the fasting, and he says, Besides, who would patch old clothing with new cloth? For the new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth, leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the old skins would burst from the pressure, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine is stored in new wineskins so that both are preserved. Now, when we hear these verses, we say, what is Jesus trying to say? It's about as clear as mud, right? Unless you're someone who knows how to sew or you know something about wine, but Jesus is a great teacher, and he wants us to look at his words. He wants us to say, what does that mean? Because he wants us to know the answers. And if you think about it, Jesus' words do make sense. No one is going to take new clothes and cut a patch out of them and put them on old clothes. You just wouldn't do that to your new clothes, would you? You would take your old clothes and you would give them away. You'd get rid of them. Uh, but you're not going to ruin your new clothes for your old clothes. And today, we put wine in bottles. But in the biblical days, wine was put in goat skins. And they sewed around the edges to, to make it a watertight bag. Now, new wine expanded as it fermented and stretched the wine skins. And after the wine had aged, the stretched out skin would burst if more new wine was poured into it. And the goat skins became old and cracked. And I've got a picture for you of a goat skin. <laughs> you know, I kind of just imagine, you know, how when you, you pour wine into a glass and people smell it, the aroma, you know, do, did they back then go, oh, it was a very good year for goat, you know? <laughs> I mean, that just doesn't look too good to me. <laughs> um, but when Jesus is talking about the wineskins, what he's really talking about is that our old life does not belong with our new life. The old and the new do not mix. Uh, it's like oil and water. Have you ever done that before, like an experiment where you put oil and water together and you shake it together and you try to get it to mesh, but it will not mesh, right? Uh, because it's so different. It can't mesh together. And Jesus is the new wine and must be poured into new wineskins. And we are the new wineskins. And we can allow Jesus to make us new on a daily basis. We have to discard the old life if we want to experience the new life in Christ. Now, these verses in Matthew chapter 9 were a wake-up call for me. The Holy Spirit used them to show me what was wrong in my life. Over 20 years ago, I had been with a group of people at a fundraiser. I was surrounded by people, and yet I never felt so alone. 
Have you been there? Have you ever been in a room full of people and you've just felt lonely? I wanted to connect with them. But for years, I had struggled with low self-esteem, and I never felt good enough. Now, this is a lie from the pit of hell, from the enemy of our souls, because we are good enough. By the grace of God, all of us are good enough. Well, this low self-esteem would just um, be hard for me to connect with people and to communicate with them. And I just came home that night, and I felt so down. I came into my bedroom, and I got on my knees, and I said, Lord, I am so tired of living this way. Show me how to be healed. I had my Bible, and I began to flip through the pages, and I came on these verses in Matthew 9, 16 through 17. And the Holy Spirit began to, t- began to teach me that when I had invited Christ into my life, I had been made new. It was as if I had received a pure white robe of salvation. And it was spotless, because when God the Father looked at me, he saw Christ. He didn't see all my imperfections and all my weaknesses. He saw who I was created to be, and he saw who I was going to become. But over time, I had brought in pieces of my old life, and I had begun to put patches on this beautiful, white, spotless robe. I would brought in the lies of the enemy that I wasn't good enough. And I even believed that if I talked and people found out what I was really like, they wouldn't like me. And of course, they didn't like me because I didn't talk, right? Um, These lies were ingrained in me from early childhood, and I was often teased and bullied, and I built up walls around my heart to protect myself. But what the Holy Spirit taught me was that those walls may have kept that hurt out, but they also kept what was good out. Those walls were so thick and so high that it kept the Holy Spirit from working in my life. Um, It also um, kept me from having good relationships that God wanted me to have. So the Holy Spirit began to talk to me about how those walls needed to come down. If I was going to connect with people, I needed to let the walls go. And the Holy Spirit began to work with me to take down one brick at a time. And I became free to become who God had called me to be. You cannot bring in the old life and try to mesh it in with the new life. And if you are struggling in your walk with Christ, look at the patches that you have on your white robe of salvation. What have you brought in And you continue to hold on to in your new life with Christ. Are there those patches of anger and unforgiveness, impatience, low self-esteem? Whatever those things are, what have you tolerated even though it doesn't belong? In Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, and this is another verse that the Holy Spirit led me to, Throw off your sinful nature and your former way of life. Do you see the action there? Throw it off. Get rid of it, which is being corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. I had to change my way of thinking, because I had become so accustomed to thinking in the old way. Now, the Holy Spirit would say to me when I would have some thoughts, he would say, is that the old life or is that the new life? If you want the Holy Spirit to renew your thoughts, you're going to have to take some action. You have to discard the old thoughts and think new thoughts. And another verse that became powerful in my journey was Ephesians 2.10. 
For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Now this verse is my life verse. And you hear people talk about having a life verse. And what that is is a verse in the Bible that God has used to speak to you that has just really changed your life. And so that everything becomes from that verse. You remember that verse and you know God is speaking to you. And the declaration that I was God's masterpiece began to destroy the enemy's lies. It takes work to live a new life. It's easier to keep the old behaviors. But then I have to say, is it really? Because those old behaviors cause us so much chaos, uh, depression, Uh, It causes us not to be free in Christ, and so it actually makes life harder to keep the old behaviors. Changing may be hard, but in the long run, it becomes easier as we live the life that God has always intended us to live. We change our old behavior when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of changing to experience a new life. I'm going to say that again. We change our old behavior when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of changing to experience a new life. When we allow the Holy Spirit to renew our thoughts and attitudes, we experience the power of Christ to have a new life. We start identifying an old, broken behavior, and then we discard it. We are praying to the Lord, Lord, I don't want to live like this anymore. Show me how to be healed. The voice of the Lord becomes stronger than the voice of the enemy, and we begin to destroy the old tapes of lies from the enemy and instead begin to apply the truth of God to our everyday lives. I have a video that, that I want you to see on how God created our bodies. And this video shows that God is constantly bringing new life into us. Your body is a new wineskin that Jesus wants to pour life into every day. We are God's masterpiece. You see how God is constantly making our bodies new. If he's making our bodies new, wouldn't he also be doing that with our minds and our thoughts and our attitudes? Uh, it's the, the power of God to make us new. In Romans eight eleven, it tells us that the power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead lives in us. Talk about power, um, energizing power that is going through our bodies and our minds. And it becomes a renewing daily resource for us. The tomb could not hold Jesus. Think of the power that is present in us if we access that power. The power of Christ can transform our lives and make us new. In Romans 12, 2, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, and then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. God has a will for you, and it is good and pleasing and perfect, and he has a purpose for your life. As I was preparing this, I couldn't help but but think of my daughter, Melissa. Uh, Her husband, Mike, and my two grandchildren, Ava and Brennan, went to the Dominican Republic this last July. Uh, They went on a mission, and it's a four-year mission. It could be longer. Um, My son-in-law, Mike, is teaching at a Christian school called Dulos. And uh, their mission at Dulos is to create leaders. Uh, So they're making Christian leaders in the Dominican Republic. But when Melissa and Mike first got this call, it was like six years ago. And there was a lot of leaving the old life. And it was really hard for Melissa because she was very comfortable here. 
Uh, she liked their old life. Uh, but one by one, God began to work with her to discard some things and um, just began to do a work in her heart. Uh, you know, it, it, was, it was tough. They had to sell their old possessions. They had to put many things in storage. Uh, they had to rent out their house. They had to, to get their own support. Um, there's so many things that she went through, and there were a lot of tears leaving the old life. But now that they are in the Dominican Republic, God is using them to change lives. And they have left that old life behind, and they are embracing the new life that God has for them, and they are experiencing such joy. So, I mean, you know, as you can see some of these pictures, you're going, okay, I'll, I'll have a new life in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> but... But it is a lot of work, too. I mean, as, as with their reaching families, um, reaching out to kids uh, in Haiti, uh, they're, they're getting to help uh, women of sex trafficking. Uh, they have some friends that are doing that, and young life. I mean, they're just getting to do so many great things. And uh, Melissa sent me a, a video, and I want you to hear from her own words. Uh, the joy of experiencing the new life in Christ. Hi, my name is Melissa Bueller, and I have been serving in the Dominican Republic with my family for just over eight months now. And I had the opportunity to talk with my mom yesterday, and I just felt myself just exploding with joy and getting to tell her, Mom, I never knew that serving Jesus could be this fun. And this is particularly remarkable for me because when the Lord called our family to go overseas back in 2013, I was adamantly opposed. I did not want to go. I, there was no yes in me. There was no, here I am, Lord, I will go. And so to watch how the Lord took me from that place to eventually a joyful surrender and now to seeing that I am just on the regular, deeply grateful to the Lord for sending us to this place is such a work of his grace and his mercy in my life and in my heart. And I think that, you know, that stems from the fact that we are depending on him in a way that we've never had to depend upon him before. Um, we're getting to share gospel truths with Dominicans and the love of Jesus to Haitians. And there is just such a richness um, when you get to um, be God's ambassador and um, you know I guess I would just encourage you that God's word is true when he says when we lose our life for him that that's when we will find it and we um, have seen that to be true in our life and I would just encourage you to take that step of faith um, and to boldly act upon what he is asking you to do because that is where real life um, awaits you. There's joy in serving Jesus. There is joy in leaving the old life behind and coming to the new life. If Jesus is calling you to new life, something new in your life, it's for a reason. He has something good ahead for you that he wants you to be prepared to do. In 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 15, it tells us either way, Christ's love controls us. And some versions say compels us. His love compels us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. You know, it really becomes that where we decide, you know what, I'm not just going to be a fan of Jesus. I'm going to be a follower, and I'm going to follow him every day. I'm going to leave the old life behind, and I am going to become new. Well, I shared about an old behavior that God revealed to me over 20 years ago. And God is still completing that work that he started in me long ago. And every now and then he will remind me that is from the old life. We are living the new life. All of us have something from the old life that we just keep around. 
because we have become used to it. What is it that you need to discard from the old life so that you can experience the joy of the new life? Let's pray. Lord, you know the answer of that question on everyone's heart. And Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would reveal that. Lord, we want to follow you. We want to know true joy that you have given us. And Lord, we want to be made new. And so, Father, we ask tonight that you would give us the strength, um, that you would, your spirit would be over us, Lord, and you would empower us to leave the old life behind so that we can experience the new life that you died to give us that you were raised from the dead to give us that Holy Spirit within us, that power. Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, uh, we just uh, thank you as Easter is coming, God, that we get to celebrate new life in you and that new life every day. Lord, work in our hearts. Uh, speak to us, God, and change us because we want to experience everything that you have for us. Lord, I just uh, send that forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, the um, worship team is going to come up, and uh, we're going to sing Made New again. You know, and as we're singing that song, really think about the words of that song and how Jesus does make us new. <laughs> You're calling me over You're pulling me close With love you surround me You give me hope Oh yeah, yeah You're taking me deeper You're making me whole With grace you redeem me Yeah. 